A very good evening to you, my friends. Thank you for again joining us on Conversations with Clive Williams. I'm Clive Williams, your host. And uh, this evening we have an icon uh, to talk to. And when I say an icon, I really mean that. Uh, this is one of the legends of our time. And I feel particularly blessed that I'm able to talk to a legend, a man who has dedicated his entire life to music, but not just to music, to the upliftment of his people. And you know, so often uh, these heroes go unsung. This evening we're going to correct that. We're going to make sure that this hero goes out with a bang when he does. But before he does that, I want to introduce to you Virgil Gibson. <laughs> Virgil, <laughs> Virgil has become one of my recent heroes because you learn as you go along that there are things you need to know that you didn't know. And one of the things I didn't know in all the, 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 the joy that the platters gave me, and for all of you who are listening and watching now who remembers songs like Only You, Smoke, gets in your eyes, harbor lights, and so forth. Uh, it's reminiscent of a time when music was music. A, a different animal. Uh, I, you know, I, it, what comes to mind is, uh, is what was in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, if music be the food of love, play on, give me a surfeit of it. And indeed, this man epitomizes one who has given us a surfeit of music. Uh, we're going to introduce some of that to you this evening. But in the meantime, let me wish you, Mr. Virgil Gibson, Dr. Virgil Gibson, a uh, happy birthday. And thank welcome you, to Conversations you. with Clive Williams. Thank you. you know, thank you. And good day. You know, sir, I watched a concert. And I'm looking at you, and I watched a concert of you. It was an... Uh, Boston, I think. Yeah, in Boston, with the red, with the with the purple suit on. With the purple suit on, <laughs> uh, man. Let me tell you, you you just you're just amazing. Uh, but but look, b before I get carried away with all that, let's let's go back to the years. Uh, people are familiar with the platters. People who love music. People who are associated with music in uh, whatever level they are, whether they listen to opera, classical, whatever. They know the platters because of the incredible music that they delivered to us. Now, that you were obviously gifted. You, your mom prayed at your birth that you would have this gift. Talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, my mother had me at the age of 15, and she went to hear Lena Horne sing Stormy Weather. And she prayed to God when she saw Lena Horne with that that God would make a gift, you know, to give her child with that kind of voice. Well, I'm here. Because when, when that happened, what I didn't know, naturally I wouldn't know nothing about it. They started talking about, you know, why I can sing like I can sing. Well, my thing was because God made me. The whole mm. bit was the fact that she prayed, when she heard Lena, Lena Horn singing Stormy Weather, she prayed then to God that her child would have a golden voice. Mm. And I'm thankful to God. I had it then. And at 77, I got it now. I'm and, I am really thankful. Indeed. Give us a background on the platters. When did you, I know that in 1965 was when I think you, you took the lead, but give us a background of the, the original platters and the iterations that they went through. Okay, well, Herb Reed was the one that started the platters, uh, early 50s. And they, he went through so many changes, you know, when I finally, when they, when I finally, caught up with some of them, it was a different world. He went and started the platters and, you know, went from one thing to another. And there was another lead singer before Tony Williams. And it's just basically the music business. If you ever been in anything that didn't have no really solid thing, there's always change. It is the music and the entertainment business. So I, 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 when they heard me, I, I finished high school when I was 16. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. And I, uh, at that time, uh, I had just led the first demonstration for lunch counters at Woolworth. Mm. 
at 15 years old. Matter of fact, Colin Powell's wife's daddy was my principal. Oh mm -hmm. boy, called him Big Red. Mm -hmm. So uh, when all these things begin to happen, uh, you just never seen nothing like this. You couldn't even imagine it, you know, even though I came from the roughest part of Alabama, Birmingham. That's where the first bomb was thrown into the church. Yeah, that's, uh, Beth, that's Bethel Church, right? Bethel Church. I was, I was, I, I lived two blocks down the street from it. I, that was the first church that got bombed. And right on the side of the church was what we called the parsonage at that time. That's where the preacher lived with his family. Sure, sure. Blew him from the, blew him from the, from the house into the basement of the church. And he got, he, I, don't, I don't think he even got a scratch. Pat them got a, one of them got a scratch. Wow. That was part of that. And then they came back again and blew the other side of the church up. That was in 19, well, the first one was, six, it was in 67 because I graduated from elementary school and I graduated two, two years earlier. Mm -hmm. And they came back and blew it up again. Well, you see and you see, I've been doing this music as far as a solo ever since I've been in, been in, in music period. I was teaching Sunday school at 12 and a half years old right there in Bethel. A delegate to the National Baptist Convention, which I never forget that. That was an experience in my life. It was at the Biddle Apartments. That was the same apartments that the Speak Brothers came in. Mm -hmm. They just called something else then. Mm -hmm. We could we could just say we you we went to went went there to hell. Well, you know, that's the so side that, that, that's the side of you that uh people don't know. And and very often we 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 just cast off musicians and and people who have artistic skills uh, without realizing that there's another side of them that did some work that accomplished some things. Now, you were very active, as you just stated, in the civil rights movement. When did the leaders recognize the kind of role you played in this movement? Well, by me being from Bethel Church, that was Fred Shellsworth was the pastor. Uh, I was known by, by, by everybody one way or another because I was it's kind of I'm pretty tough, you know. You, yeah. you couldn't just talk, but you had to get with it, baby, because I'm going to help you to get with it. <laughs> so, uh, they, they know me very well. See, everybody said, that's Booba. Yeah. Lord have mercy, Jesus, honey. Ain't no telling what he's going to do now. <laughs> but the next thing was coming, but you know you can trust him, so whatever it is, give it to him. Yeah. That was the reputation that I had at that time. And I still have it. Yeah. When you doing things of this nature right here, you got old people being beat up. And I'm saying it because I'm, I'm, I'm not an onlooker. I'm telling you what I know. When you got people being dragged in cars and put their head in the windows and beat to a pulp, hmm. I came up with that. And I remember very well, you know, there's always some tough sisters. Yeah. Her name was Sister the Body Label. She rode the police down about 30 stabs and beat them so bad, they had to start sending three and four car loads of police and we whooped them too. Yeah, <laughs> those, those are the stories that we hear. <laughs> <laughs> name of the game, Doc. Yeah. That's just the way it was. We stopped that mess. Yeah. So that was, a, that was a thing in my life. I helped start the Civic League. By me being, see, I was, I was only four feet 10 when I went to high school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was pretty little. Yep. My grandmother, and when I went to Parker High School, that was, that was the first time they had a class as for a scene, could blacks do algebra? I was chosen in that. I went home one day. I said, Mama, I'm having, my grandmama, I said, I'm having a problem, Mom. She said, well, baby, Mama can't help you. Hmm. I went from the bottom of the class, understand me, to the complete top. I passed by the library and discovered the library and never quit reading because the statement was anything that you don't want one of them to know put in a book. Well, I found the book. Yeah. And I kept yeah. on reading and I took Webb and Lewis Read Dynamics so I could read a book, understand me, 15, 20 minutes. Exploratory level. I got that from John Kennedy because that's what school he going to, talking mm -hmm. about his reading. When you come to a situation like Birmingham, when you're seeing kids getting beat up and stomped, getting shot, the finger shot off, understand me, face beat the ball. It does, it, it makes a different person out of you, <clears throat> which is this. We got to do something better than talk. We got to do something better than, than criticize each other because we're in the same boat one way or another. 
when I graduated from high school, didn't have a dime, even though I ranked 13 out of 410 that graduated. Hmm. I was at the top of the class. Yeah. When you got nothing and nobody helped me. No, I was a tenor solo all the way through. I still didn't get no help. With all that, nobody offered to help me. And when I got offered what have you, when I went there, there was no help for me for whatever reason. I don't know. I'm not angry about it. I just think about when you see somebody coming through, help them. Absolutely. That might be the same person that you that that have passed by you on the way up. It's just a matter of time. So this is how I did with the music. I started writing. And how, how, how old were, how old were you when you started writing music? Oh God, well, maybe by six. Wow. Maybe well, about six. I don't well, know because well, I was always scribbling something. But what did a couple of questions? What did writing music mean to you at the time, and how? In hell's name, were you able to write the kind of music with a kind of oppression, with a kind of deprivation that you were experiencing? How could you write such sweet music and sing so much beautiful music? That was God's will for me. That's all I can say about that because, you know, sometimes we think we know. Sometimes we say, well, you know, that's the way to know. You see... I came up in a situation, understand me, that most people could not have imagined. Hmm. You got a house, understand me, with the cold going through there, and you get some wallpaper. You said, this the walled off that stair. Yeah, but only problem was the wallpaper froze. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I had to deal. Yeah. You got yeah. to deal with this. I had to turn over in the same part of the spot in the bed. I was pleased to death. Yep. It's been good to me. That's the realities of it. I've seen so much in my lifetime, you know, I've always been a helper. I, I just, something about me, if I see you need something, if I can help you, I'm going to help you. Yeah. I mean, you ain't going to run over me. That's out of the question. Because I'm going to thump you too if you say. If you That's right. <laughs> you know, everybody knew. They had, they had a reputation. Lord have mercy, Jesus. That's booba. I hope don't nobody mess with me today because you know we're going to fight. Yeah. <laughs> and the same, the same people, when they needed something, Miss Bell, send Boot down here because they trusted me. I yeah. want to give you the answer before I get it. Forget it. Her name was a Miss Elizabeth Chapel. We called her Mama Titi. Hmm. The last time I saw her, a few years back before she went back to God, I see her, I go to the house, and she started telling me some things. The house was built on prayer. They had not a dime. They prayed on it, and God blessed them to get the house built from downtown, Brick House, at that time. The last time I saw her, I went and, you know, she wanted to fix me some food. I ate it, you know. Then she came back. Then I came back, and her daughters were there. Veronica was there, and Ann. They said, I said, well, I come to see Mom Chapel. They said, Boo said, you can't see her. I knew right then she was on her way out, you know. Yeah. And uh, I said, well, look, give her these flowers. They said, you bought her flowers? I said, sure, I bought her flowers. That was the last time I saw her. You have things in your life <clears throat> that are so triggering. That right there brought so much back to me. It put some stiff in me mm -hmm. that I knew was there. But when you see older people tell you, say, hey, we sure feel safe when you're here. Yeah. You never get over there. You know, so I'm, I'm going to try, I'm going to try something here. Virgil, I'm going to ask my producer if he can just uh, set up a... One of the songs that uh, you gave us that was timeless and your lead and your rendition in that particular song I think is appropriate at this time. Uh, can we um, get that song, Only You, up? Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing what your music has done for us over the decades. Uh, it's music that's timeless. Let's listen to Only You. We have a great show for you tonight, and uh, we want to get it off to a rousing start with a great international star. You saw him here last year. He has performed all over the world in Japan and Korea and Italy and Germany and Venezuela. He has appeared with the Coasters and the Drifters and the Rivingtons. 
You know him as the lead singer from the Platters. Please welcome the great Virgil Gibson. inimitable voice of Virgil Gibson. But I say inimitable because that's not entirely true. Uh, Virgil, that rendition, uh, everybody knows that, whether they're in Japan, whether they're in uh, Guinea-Bissau, wherever they are, they know the song. If they don't know it, they've been living under a rock all their lives. That song is an anthem, right? No, no. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 man, the man who maybe sung that song before you might have been Tony Williams, right? Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, I don't. We're not going to even compare, man. That's your rendition. I saw that. I saw you do that. I mean, that's phenomenal. What, what kind of, um, what happened in you spiritually when you did that song? Well, I'll tell you, man. Spirit always, I've always wanted to do spiritual music and I never sung slut. It's been my, that way for me all of my life. And because basically, regardless of what, I'm really a spiritual person. You know, I'm a warrior, extraordinary, I believe. I fast and I pray and I do what's right. You know, whatever gonna come on, bring it. Cause I'm not, I'm just, just who I am. Yeah. When you're doing certain music like that, it got it got so many ways to travel, and when I when I do it right now, I'm going about I watch people break down, and I always at the end of that people always say, "Well, Virgil, say uh, you you still singing these songs and you got some gospel?" I say, "Yes, because that's where it all came from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got forty some songs right now writing that I hope that you'll enjoy that with me." That we talked about, so you sure. can get off on this boat. <laughs> what I'm talking about. Yeah. I didn't meet you by chance. I don't believe in that. No. I believe in divine intervention. But this thing about this, the only you itself. Who, who are you talking about? See, I change it like this: only you, only God. Yeah. Just word. And and people say, well, Virgil, it don't go like that. I see it, but you, you got to recognize intentions. Absolutely. Intentions. Who? who, who Who's more important, understand me, than you do the best work that you can by the human beings that you're around? It can only make you better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of being angry about something, as Solomon said, you didn't try to understand it, you know, yeah. that makes it better. When you I know, talked to you, I knew it was different. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated, not just by you, but by, by, by Tony Williams as well. Uh, and, and I know the people watching us. Uh, they they see and they they know Tony Williams as um, one of the original lead singers of the Platters. Uh, he influenced you in some way or other. 
Yes, he did. Well, I heard Tony Williams when I was, I was, I'm a, I was what, maybe six, seven years old, eight, right in there. And I'm listening at this man here. I said, you know what? I'm going to sing with them one day. And when they heard me, it wasn't no question about that. Paul Robert heard me because he, him and Al Frazier of the Ribbon just doing Papa Uma Uma Red heard me. They was buddies in the military, so they heard me. Mm -hmm. And that started me to listen, a lot, other, a lot of people to listen at me. And then they come and say, well, man, what, what, they, they would tell them, say, well, where this dude come from? They said, oh, we found him. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that start right there for, from, because Tony Williams had, had gone out, his, his whole thing had changed a lot. You know, this world will change you mm -hmm. in some of the most negative ways. He was yeah. one of the greatest singers that I had ever known about, you know, some other ones I can name. But when you get out here, yeah, man, I tell you, if you ain't got God with you, you can one rest with show the devil walking right beside you. Yeah. He'll tell you that to make you to make you other than what you really want to do. By the time that you discover it, man, you're in a hole. The one, the girl that was with us, Beverly, she was the Clark sisters. Yeah. You know, that's the ones I shot song mm -hmm. with. She was the Clark sisters. They were I met them. I met so many people when I was when I was touring. My thing was they. I, I was at the house one day, and I decided to go down to, into uh, to Los Angeles. And here come this big tall brother. I said, I don't know if I got to fight or run. Mm -hmm. Buck Ram sent for me. He said, Buck, when I said I don't know no Buck man. What are you talking about? He said, Buck Ram of the Platters. So he sent me to get you. I said, I don't know him. He said, Yeah, but they know you. Yeah, they had been following me all over with Paul Rogers. Them sure, <laughs> they don't follow me every. He know every song, whatever people did. They said, "No, this we've been looking for you." So that happened. I met him and his wife, and one thing to another, because he told me, he "said Look, man, we have never met nobody to sing like you." Yeah, and since Tony gone, we really haven't. And then, uh, uh, what's the other one? There? Uh, with this ring, one that made with this ring. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't even think of it. Right it, it, it'll, it'll come back. It'll, it'll come back to you. But but Paul Robbie saw the incredible talent that you had, and yeah. and 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 he wanted to restructure the group, right? Yeah, so, yes, he did. And, and took the group on tour. Yeah, they, well, see, that was much more to it than that. It was so much other garbage that we don't need to discuss here. But yeah. you know, this 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 thing called music. If you ain't careful, what have you, some money thing can come to you. You say, I can do that. Yeah, but it's called clack lack boom That's called the penitentiary. So, I, you know, that what was happening with him um, and, 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 and here, here, uh, Tony Williams was drinking so much. You, you see yeah. him on television making all this right here. One thing to another. Matter of fact, his son got killed. He was, he was playing with Chicago when Chicago got their first uh, 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 that's interesting. I, I want you to. I want. I want us to pause on that note because I want to come back to that story because a lot of people want. You know, want wants to make the connection. What happened? What really happened to Tony Williams? Not that it's a part of your story, but it's a. It's a part of it, the interest that people have in the platters yeah. and how things unfolded. But we're going to take a break. It's your birthday. I, I hope you have. I hope you have something nearby that you can sip. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We're gonna, oh, and I appreciate you, brother. We, I we, say, brother, I mean it just like I'm saying it. I ain't just saying it for no slang. Yeah, yeah. I mean it. We're, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come right back to you. My oh, guest, okay. Vir Virgil Gibson of The Platters. You get off the plane, and you're like, wow, I'm alive. You have to breathe, because it's breathtaking. Is the center of the world. Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, Queens. They have the Rockaways, the beach, or the Flushing Meadow Park. Small places that you never think exist. From there, we'll go up to the Bronx. Nature. Brooklyn. You got Coney Island. You get to happen upon things. Yes. Manhattan never gets out of class. Chelsea, Soho. Hay cosa ya de lujo. Es un área bien fancy. ¿Me entiendes, Carol? To the Empire State Building. Go to the top of Rockefeller Center. Staten Island. Staten Island. There's something for everybody. New York City is an awesome place to come with family. You got things for kids, you got things for adults. Even like museums have amazing story times. 
That's the beauty of this organic city. It creates new flavors of what once was coming from another country. All of it, everyone's welcome. The biggest rainbow in the world. El latte de New York. My guest is Virgil Gibson, former lead singer of Paul Robes Platters. One of the greatest voices of all times. A real living icon, a legend of our time. And we, we just want to honor you, my friend. And on your birthday, I think it's the most appropriate time for us to do so, to, um, to give people a window into your amazing career. I just want to sort of reiterate the fact that if you're just joining us, in my discussion with Virgil, uh, he established something that we had always known, that not only is he an entertainer, but he has been in the trenches of the civil rights of our lives, for our lives, starting at around about age 12. And, um, you know, many of our incredible leaders uh, have had have put themselves at peril for us. We are standing on the shoulders of these people. And um, I wish, and Virgil, this is a, just a, a real wish, but a, a really firm wish, almost an affirmation, that people in our great country, and I think the United States is a great country, can begin to take a look at our heroes, the people who not just um, made music, made us happy, made us think, because music does all kinds of things, is responsible for all kinds of emotions. But in the meantime, you have also fought to make this country what it is. And yeah. you have fought, you have fought to make us equal. And I thank you for that. We're talking about Tony Williams and his demise, right? And, and you answered one of the age-old questions we have. One of the reasons I, I've been, I've been pressed from in my 20s to become a music manager. I don't know why. I was involved in radio and broadcasting for a long time. And I've always been pressed to become the manager of a band, the manager of, uh, of a group of singers. And I've always avoided that because I've always thought the musicians were extremely difficult to handle. <laughs> now, you, you have explained some of the difficulties and the crises that musicians face. So please go on, tell us, you know, finish with the Tony Williams story and then tell us some of the crises that you saw. Tony Williams was a, to me, that was a hero to me. I loved his voice and everything. And by the time that I got to be in a ways close to him, it was like, the business has gobbled him up, you know, one thing to another. The alcohol and the drugs, period, you know, ruined him. Hmm. He was just like, uh, he was on television making all kind of movements and everything else like a man, like a man that's crazy, you know. I, I looked at that, uh, I'm saying, this is a person that I looked up to yeah. Because I think, I didn't think there was nobody like Tony Williams. I just didn't. <laughs> and uh, some of the older ones weren't happy. I went to singing, and people started telling me, said, man, you, you sound like them. I said, well, that was my hero. Tony Williams had so much going, but you got to recognize out him, the devil don't go to sleep out him. <laughs> you start drinking a lot, and you start being in a whole lot of conversations, understand me. You got cocaine one place, heroin another place. All kind of psychedelic drugs on one uh, on another table. Some people are getting so crazy you don't know whether or not you need to leave or try to get them out the way. Yeah. If you ever want to see the devil, must have had one business. It's called entertainment. Cause this right here, you got to have. You got to be a praying person. People being praying for you. Cause anything that you think that you won't do is coming to your doorstep. All of it's coming right to the doorstep. I'm a witness for that. I've seen it so much in my career. They talk that stuff. Just uh, I remember when Sly first got started. We was up in San Francisco. Yeah. One thing with that. You understand me? Making all your money. As a matter of fact, I promoted him in Birmingham at Legion Field. You're making all the money, but you see, 
the devil right there with you. Hmm. Do this. Enjoy yourself over here. Well, you don't live at one time. You better write about all that. The point is, can you survive <clears throat> what you're doing? This field itself, and I tell youngsters, I don't care where you come from or what you think you know, you don't. It's hmm. best understanding this right here that you recognize the fact you you enter in one thing, you enter in the devil's hole. One way or another, because what? The root of all evil, they say, is what? Money? You see all this stuff that's on television right now? Uh, it ain't quite like what they're saying. People go there, understand me with one thing in mind, how I'm going to get this money. Yeah. You know, you got women that have morals. By the time they get there, they forgot how to spell it. Because it's all money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, 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 love, the love of money, man, just takes the over. The love of money will make yeah. you do the things I have seen to make a maggot puke. Yeah. Why do you say anything? I said, Buddha, they said, no, you don't lie, but you know the thing, the way you say it, what I'm going to tell you. Yeah. You know, com gonna... com com coming from you, coming from you, you know, with your wisdom, I, I just trust that. The entertainers here, uh, you know, I'm in New York, you're in Southern California. We're surrounded by entertainment people. I hope the younger people are listening <clears throat> to your words I of wisdom. I really hope so. Yeah. That is my whole, my thing right now is this. I went to Bay City, Texas, it's Virgil Gibson Day now. And the youngsters, when I was there, they get, I'm, they get they behind me, around me, in front of me. It's like I was just... In, in a place I couldn't move, and they're crying, and I couldn't take too much of that. I, you know, it kind yeah. of broke me down. Yeah. You see this? They said, Mr. Bird, you coming back? I said, yes, I am. I went and wrote the song called We Are. Hmm. And the Bible said, a child shall lead them, and we all make one. Yeah. It's already done, it's copyrighted, and I got 35, about almost 40 more uh, that you can give me a hand with when you get ready. Cause you need to write something with me too. <laughs> See, I'm just real, man. It, you, when you meet real people, it's a different story. You see? Yeah. yeah. You know, all the, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All this stuff that you know, when an elder dies, a whole library just left. Yes. Yes. I, I'm going to. I'm gonna leave it right there because you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, you ain't yeah. nothing. You got all this knowledge over here. They got nothing to 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 go and check out, and all the experience that you've had all over your life, and don't nobody know it because you didn't leave it in the beginning. That's right. Was the word. You know, sir, what you're saying is not coincidental. It, you know, and this is personal here. Uh, I have my grandson in the studios with us as we speak because he's he's. <laughs> He's here to kind of help, all right? <laughs> Whatever he helps with, he helps. He helps the producer, he helps me. And he's listening to your words. And if nothing else, it might impact him or some other kid, what you're saying. Uh, we need our elders like yourself. But, but then I put you in a category that you don't deserve to be in because you're only an elder in terms of the years, in terms of the music, you are vintage. You are just ready to happen. And and I know that you're rearing to go. You're rearing to perform. COVID, COVID, COVID has really COVID has really done a number on us, right? And and that, that's the only reason why I would not have encouraged you to come to New York from last year. But but some way, somehow, uh, by design, we've gotta work out a way for you to come and and bless new york with your music at some point uh and that takes me back to the tour that you went on years ago back in the 60s and 70s it's called it was called if i remember right remember the music remember the magic remember the magic yeah i got some see i got some videos of what with that too what have you then whenever i got to get some of that to y'all mm -hmm. what have you i got video uh i went and went on that and there was claude Glenn Gray, Willie Nelson wrote the song, some of the stuff, what have you, that we did had, had an opportunity to do with. Something else here, I just want to, well, I'll put it like this right now. When you got all these kids, you're a hero to these kids. Every time, every time your program come on, I'm not preaching to you, I'm just saying it. Yeah. Maybe I need to preach, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the old is this right here. Without children, we got nothing. Yeah. 
Now, some of the children have heard something like, Papa, 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 Huma, Ma, Ma, Papa, Huma, Ma, Havela, Huma, Ma, Ma, Papa, Huma. Hey, that, that, that was from the Rivingtons, right? Yeah, yeah, I was with the Rivingtons in the first place for 18 years. Yeah. And the last yeah. thing I did, women called, I don't want to do baby, and you're going to pay. I got that. We did that at Venice Beach. It has never been formally released. I got to talk to you about that, what have yeah. you. I don't want a new baby, you're going to pay. That's all Virgil Gibson, every bit of him. That's in the Rivingtons. If you pull the Rivingtons down someplace, you'll see another batch of Rivingtons, and we all dressed in black. I just happen to be the dude in front. <laughs> listen, man, listen, we've we, we got to take another break. We, we, I, I, look, the, the, plan was, the plan was to have you on for as long as I could and then go to Bernard. But Bernard has something to tell you. I, I have something to share with you also. Uh, again, uh, you know, listeners, we want to thank you for listening. Follow us on Instagram at our world at Our World Media. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, Our World, the number one, Our World One. You are on the Our World Media Network. I'm Clive Williams. This is Conversations with me. Uh, my friend here, Bernard, is going to join us in a minute. But i got to say something to this gentleman that we're with, Virgil Gibson. Uh, he deserves your admiration, your love, and for the music, he has made sure that the music of the Platters has survived the times. And uh, a little later on, we're going to play another cut. But this time, it's uh, his other side, the gospel side. Let's take a break, and we come right back. I'm Clyde Williams. New York State's largest African-American Chamber of Commerce, known as LIAACC, is now accepting new membership candidates. LIAACC has appeared on WABC, Here and Now, NBC's Positively Black, WLIW21, FIOS1, and in Long Island Business News. Membership consists of a variety of men and women of distinction who have been bestowed some of the most prestigious awards in the region. We host monthly membership meetings and signature events, including the Long Island African-American Business Expo, Annual Health Fair, Ladies of LIAACC Annual Women's History Month program and our annual Black History Month art exhibition. Join by simply logging on to our easy new membership sign up portal at www.liaacc.org. Hi, my name is Maya Delgado and I am the brand ambassador of Kids Break Down. And this is my demo video. Enjoy! Download app on Google Play or App Store. Create account. Choose avatar. Enter Kids Breakground Roadmap. Roadmap consists of math, spelling, memorization, and matching mini games. After each mini game, personality and interest questions will appear to pinpoint which job may suit you best. After completion of all eight mini games, you will be presented with jobs you may want to learn more about. Read fun facts about all the different types of jobs within the law science, and arts career. Use your gold bricks to make your job environment fully complete. Go back and play mini games to earn more bricks if needed. I hope you enjoy the Kids Breakdown demo video. Make sure to download today and share with your friends. This platform will pave the way for kids who are just like me, the groundbreakers of tomorrow. You're going to hear another side of Virgil Gibson right now. We're going to put up a music that's uh, new to you. I don't think you've heard this one before, but it's the other side and the upside of Virgil Gibson. I know you ain't going to church tomorrow, so I'm going to send you now. Turn the lights up. When trouble rises And I can't see my way If I had wings I'd fly away I wish I could fly Like that eagle Way up In that peaceful sky sure I can for my prayers or my wings 
to take me through. Virgil, that song, <laughs> that song is such a powerful song, man. Uh, it brought, it gave me a moment here. Thank you very much. I wish, uh, you know, we're going to do this again, clearly. Uh, we're going to have more of your music and more of that type of music uh, with you the next time you come back, and that'll be real soon. Uh, again, I want to wish you happy birthday, and I want to wish you health, prosperity, live long and strong. Uh, before you go, I just want to have Bernard say a few words to you, greet you, and, and share with you the kind of person that you really are and share with the world the kind of pe person you really are. But I, I just, anecdotally, I just want just to tease you a little bit. I, I heard that you know Snoop Dogg very well. Yeah, I do. <laughs> tell us a little bit. Tell, tell, <laughs> tell us a little I'm bit about... A little bit about... <laughs> From he was like a, I, might see him, I might see him within the next week. No kidding. Yeah, I got to go. I got to go check on him and William McGinnis. Wow, he kind of grew up in 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 your hands, kind of thing. Yeah, I well, see him and my children. I, my, I didn't know who he was. I was on ripping and running, so I was always probably high school. And I see this little dude. They say, I, I said, who is this little boy right here? Because the togs was bigger than Snoop. Yeah. And uh, they said, my, my wife at that time, she said. That's Lil Snoopy. I said, I don't know nothing about Lil Snoopy. What you mean? He said, that's Lil Snoopy. I said, well, why, who was it for? They said, oh, Chuck Mim, that's my son. And you basically said, they take care of him. They ain't looking nothing happen to him. And I looked up on the stand. I mean, years later, I was talking to my son on the phone. He said, I said, he said, Dad, you remember Lil Snoopy? I said, yeah. He said, that's Snoop Dogg. I said, what you say? <laughs> said, that's Snoop Dogg. Yeah. He said, that's who he is. So yeah. they still in front of, you know, they, do their yeah. thing. I got to go down there uh, because I know that well, everybody, so many people in Long Beach know me. Yeah. 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 I, they really know me in <laughs> Long Beach. I was, <laughs> so I know these people and I met you now. Yeah. I'll be going down there this one, this uh, next week to see who I need to see and uh, see what can be put together from there. Oh, I did. What's his name? Uh, Ron, what's, what's his the football player? He, he's dead now, but uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I forget his name right now, but he was down in the beach area, and I did a thing for him around there. Uh, I got to go back down there and see the parents and stuff like that. Everybody down down in the beach, they know me, you know. So now it's time for me to get back to that beach. <laughs> Man, you, I, I know, I know that you have so many anecdotes that you can share with us. So, very definitely, I, you, you have my word. You, we're going to come back and we're going to talk some more. This has been fascinating. It's not been long enough. I wish we had more time. Bernard Adolphus, I want to introduce you to our guest, Virgil Gibson. And uh, today is his birthday. It's the ninth. What does that mean? What, who is Virgil Gibson, according to numerology, man? Good evening, Mr. Gibson, sir. It's a pleasure. It's um, a pleasure for me to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, indeed. Um, today is also John Lennon's birthday. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I knew about that. Go, okay, go wow, ahead. wow. That's awesome. God gave us our birth date, and our parents give us our names. In our names come our personality and our mentality, and in our birthday comes what God wants us to do. Um, so you, you've been doing a great job for God that all, all your life you have, in, you were entitled to a lot of spiritual rewards that you've gotten from God because of the work that you have done. You are a humanitarian, 100% a humanitarian. And that, that is fascinating because you've been more places, met more people, do more things than most people. Yeah. Indeed, Indeed, he has. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what, what, what is your, what, what's your birthday? October 9th, 1944, 5.30 in the evening. Mm -hmm. 1934? <laughs> 44, 44, 44, yeah, yeah, yeah. 5.30. Five, five, five yeah. The, the two numbers that God gave you is the number nine and the number one. Uh, one, one is a leader. One is determined, one is aggressive, one is inventive. 
You see? And so by the one and the nine, and everything is between one and nine, the beginning and the end. You see? Nelson Mandela is also a nine like you. Hmm. You see? Your name says that you're dependable, loyal, trustworthy, sincere, honorable. You see? Yeah. And you have a perfectionist way about you. You like things in order and you like things in place. Alone, yeah. you're comfortable being alone because then you can think the way you want to be. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, we told the truth. So that's... <laughs> we told that, the truth. I mean, that, I've been around a lot of people in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Consumel, that's when they gave me the reason in Consumel. But by me coming out of the South, my parents... They would tell me such thing. If you don't believe this, look, look over there. I'll give a good example for one whole year. You see, I remember we didn't have no food in the house. Hmm. I went to bed, and I saw a black boy in front of the fireplace eating peanuts. I told my grandmother about that. She went and played the numbers, and we made eleven dollars. That was a lot of money way back then. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, then I could later find out. Understand me. In, in relationship to the cosmics and the different laws. By me coming from the South, a lot of stuff we kept, you know, rather than come over on the, on the transports. We left them just like I know people, they can come up and look at you and read your hands. Yeah. And I thought that was something crazy. And then I looked up, I said, wait a minute, this is what they've been doing in China for years. This is how they even uh, 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 select That's right. people. That's right. And would tell me something, but you, you know, but I just know my parents wouldn't tell me what happened. They just said, well, you can do this. And then then being able to cook and go get herbs that nobody told me about to heal people, I've yeah. been doing this all my life. And then I meet you, Lord have mercy. Now, I really did. Yeah. So nobody has been around me to talk to me like this in yeah. my life. I might mention a little bit what have you, but see, this brings me all the way back yeah. to where I need to be, you know. And uh, I'm thankful to God. I don't believe in uh, what you said by chance. I believe in divine intervention. Absolutely. We're not talking by chance. Everybody around is not by chance. This is divine intervention. And I believe that, period. And my whole work right now, from here to the cemetery, bring it on. And that ain't going to be anytime soon. No, sir. And this, as you say, my friend, is not coincidental. No, sir. It is, it is by design. Uh, Virgil Gibson, I want to thank you very much. Bernard Adolphus, thank you very much, my friend. Uh, Bernard, I, I think you want to maybe, uh, before we go, repeat your number again so that our viewers and our listeners will be able to get in touch with you to get some wisdom here. Uh, my cell is 347-939-2087. And my landline is 718 Six nine two two nine two zero. Repeat that cell number again, Bernard, real three, slow. Three four seven nine three nine two zero eight seven. Bernard Adolphus, our numerologist on the show. Uh, Virgil Gibson, we, you and I have even a deeper link uh, with St. Yeah. John's with St. John's University and Dr. Pam. Uh, so. You know, it is it is one that we treasure, and I want to thank Dr. Pam for making this interview possible. Uh, how a little country boy like myself gets to talk to somebody like yourself is not again a coincidence. It's 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 ordained, and I trust that this conversation will go beyond here, and will blossom into something real, real good. Looking forward to talking to you again, sir. Take care. Love all y'all, and I just appreciate you, brother. Cause I'm, if I didn't, if, I mean, that just, I appreciate it. It's good Lord for putting us together. Yeah. You know, I just guess, I guess it may be me, but you see, I get some other deep things happening yeah. already. With my struggles running funny and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. It, it's it's been real. It's been real. Thank you so very much. Uh, this is conversations with Clive Williams. It gets better. We'll have Virgil Gibson back real soon. Thank you, Bernard Adolphus. Thank you, my producer. Thank you, Annette. Thank you, Stone, my grandson. Thank you, young uh, operator there. Thank you so very much. Have a great evening, everyone. See you back next Saturday, same time, 6 p.m.
Thank you very much, Clive. Thank you.